in 2 Timothy chapter 3, the Bible talks about that we would be unthankful. But I'm so glad that we are a church that knows that if it had not been for the Lord, I, I can't speak for nobody else. I, I, I've been thinking about this whole time. My wife has been off of work. And financially, they said she was only going to receive a certain amount of her paycheck while she's been off. But the Lord told us before this started, he said, I'm God. He said, and I've already been there and gone. Now, that might not sound like much to you. But when you start thinking about your stuff and you start thinking about the fact that God has already been there and gone, you can celebrate. Because when you start thinking about missing part of your money and start thinking about how this is going to work and how that's going to work, and all of a sudden you look and say, I got more now than I had when she was working, you can lift your hands and tell them thank you. I ain't got no church in here. But if you get in trouble, then we'll find out how strong your thank you is. I'm grateful. This morning. You feel it? You feel that shift right there? I wish you would go ahead and bless him. I wish you would. In spite of what you're feeling, in spite of what you think, he's still good. He's still worthy of your praise. He don't care what it looks like. Don't care what you're feeling right now. He's still worthy. If it had not been for the Lord, he that was on my side, I can't tell you where I would be. You ought to open up your mouth and bless him that it wasn't your baby that got hit by a car while they were sledding. He cut that when you went to bed last night, you got up this morning with all of the activities of your limbs, with your health and strength, you ought to play. Hey, 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 hey. We are up to almost a million people that have gotten out of here concerning this coronavirus but yet we still breathe in his air the blood is still running warm in our veins some of us have had it and we recovered because of the healing power of the holy ghost and you mean we gonna come into church and we ain't got no praise the devil is a liar because the redeemed of the lord Ought to open up their mouth and say so. Y'all playing with me up in here? He shot to go set to 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 to. Hey, hey, my say echo set. No 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 no. Hey, robot say echo. No 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 no. If nothing else, we give you praise for still being here. We give you praise that our children didn't have to bury us. We give you praise. Hey hey hey. Hey, that the word of the Lord that we shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord is still moving. Y'all playing with me? Y'all playing with me up in here? Y'all playing with me up in here? My grandmother used to say that he'll keep me from dangers seen and unseen. He got to go. You don't know what you encountered last week that was designed to take you out of here. But it was the mercy of God. It was the grace of God. It was the blood that's never lost its power. That still got you here. You better praise him. I feel some pushing me here. You better praise him. That cut the post that today. Hey, hey. Hey. Shut the post that today. I should have lost my mind, but I'm still here. I should have died in a car accident, but I'm still here. I should have died 
while I was out in the world, but I'm still here. Y'all playing with me up in here. Come on, tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Hey, 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 what the devil meant for evil, God meant it for my good. Ooh, hey, 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 shako te 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 te. Hey, masiyako nde de. Sote na de te 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 te. Hey, roba ba 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 se. Hey, hey, shako te 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 te. Nikando do 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 se. Masiyako te de. No cost to take up the Rubasia number. So protect Y'all playing with me. Y'all playing with me. Listen, if you got a prayer language, pray in the Holy Ghost. I feel something turning. I feel calamity turning. I feel it turning. Oh, Satokose. Yeah, yeah. So maketende, so kosketende i. Oh, yes, slower. Yes, slower. Yes, slower. Shukatana de 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 de. Masiateke na de kosketende e. Samana de 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 de. Robi maske andriki ababaso. Uma se kante te 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 Roba ba 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 se hey 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 Shoto ko satana na na te 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 Riba ba kunda de 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 te Roba ba ba se eko satana te 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 Satan we serve notice on you You can't have not one of these Hey 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 Shoto ko satana te 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 Roma se eko satana na na te 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 there was a preacher there was a preacher that went in to the hospital for surgery and he was concerned about what was going to happen and he said that in the surgery after the surgery was over the doctor told him that he coded it out and he said they had to bring him back and he said he asked the Lord he said Lord what what was that all about what happened and he said the devil came he said but he saw the blood that had been smeared over the doorpost and that's when he knew that he was there illegally see we can stop preaching about the blood of jesus if we want to but it has never lost its power and i'm telling you for some of us the devil showed up this week but it was blood that was smeared over the doorpost. And he said, I can't be here because I don't have legal access. You ought to celebrate the blood of Jesus that has washed us and has cleansed us and has never lost its power. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. He the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Set up on another. I plead guilty. And I plead the blood. Shut up on Saturday. Hey, my say echo Saturday. When my hands weren't clean, it was the blood. Shut up. Come on, right there. Just give him one more wave offering, and we're gonna get in this word. Just right there. Hey, hey. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, my son, put on that. Ha, 
This is be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going. Huh. Yes, Lord. I have found him to be faithful. <laughs> The Bible says that even when we deny him, he can't deny himself. I can't speak for you, but I'm glad about it. God bless you, praise team. I promise I'm done. How am I see under the Lord tonight? It is good to be back in the house of worship. We had snow earlier this week. We had snow. And I could feel myself getting a little worried. I said, wait a minute, I need to be out of here because I need to be in the house of God. Don't care nothing about holding this mic, but I just need to be in his presence. And so I'm glad to be here. We honor our apostle in his presence. Come on, you can do better than that. I could spend all day talking about the awesomeness of this man, but I won't. I won't do it. He'd rebuke me after church if I did. We honor Lady Ramaya and Pastor John and Pastor Brittany. Everybody in their rightful places. God bless you, Pastor Justin. I know what you're trying to do. There's something else in your heart. <laughs> I, I am excited about my brother who came through here last week like a mighty rushing wind. I said, this, I'm so upset with him. I said, God, don't use me like that. Lord, have mercy what is going on and so he he really uh, what he preached last week uh, it really was a life changing word because talking about the difference between opportunity and destiny I've been thinking about that all week because I said God I don't want opportunity it's cool but I want my destiny I want the thing that you put me in the earth to do. This morning, I, I'm really, ministers, y'all really can come out of there because I promise you, one thing I can guarantee is I won't be here long. My sister, she hates when I say that, but I, I can promise you that. And I can tell you the number one reason why I'm not going to be here long is because I have a newborn at home and I don't get much sleep. He, he's got his days and nights mixed up. So he wants to sleep during the day and stay up at night. So please know that I ain't had a real strong uh, night of sleep in a long time without screaming and lights on and, and bottles and burping and all of that. So just know for that reason, if nothing else, I can promise you I ain't going to be here long. But I want to, I, I, Bishop asked me on Friday night, he said, are you ready for Sunday? And I said, yes, sir. And I, I had a word in my spirit. And I woke up Saturday morning, and the Holy Ghost began to scream something in my spirit. Because if I be honest, we was all getting rebuked this morning from what the Lord had, had originally dropped in my spirit. But he screamed something in my spirit. Saturday morning. If you're online, God bless you for our online uh, Gates of Refuge family. If you're typing or if you're writing, I want you to write this simply. It is written. It is written. The Lord said to me, he said, a whole lot of what we have before him, the things that we spend a whole lot of time praying about the majority of those things have already been written 
if we really understand uh, predestination, we are really just walking out what has already been predetermined concerning our lives. What we are struggling with is not what's necessarily going to happen, but how long do I have to wait for it to happen? We struggle a lot of times with, as what James Ruffin would call, the in-between times. But what we have to understand about God is, is that there is never a time where being in God won't require you to have to wait. When you get what it is that you think you want, it's still going to be something else that you're going to have to wait on. <laughs> if you leave God and you go serve the devil, just rest assured, as Mel Donato Lewis would say, it's still going to be something that you're going to have to wait on. I believe if the scripture is recorded correctly, and I know that it is, the Bible says that they died waiting on the promise. So when they put us in the ground, whether we've reached millionaire status of wealth, uh, whether we prophesy to every person uh, that we're supposed to prophesy to, uh, whether we've laid hands on every person we're supposed to lay hands on, it's going to be something that we still going to be waiting on. And so what the Lord told me this morning, he said, is that the reason why a lot of us are fighting, he used the word fighting with our destiny, is because we don't truly understand or have a revelation of what we have really been sent here to do. Jesus was clear about what he was sent here to do. Jesus knew that he was sent here to be the sacrificial lamb for, for sin. He knew what he was sent to do. So the healing, the deliverance, the laying on of hands, all of the things that happened in the in-between time was awesome and wonderful. But the reason why Jesus came, he came to be the sacrificial lamb. And Jesus wasn't fighting with that. Now, even in his flesh... In the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says that Jesus asked the question. He said, is there any way that this cup can pass from me? And I believe that, 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 that when Jesus kept praying and kept ascending, I believe that literally they just took the Holy Ghost, just took him back to it is written. You know why you came. You know what you got to do. I know uh, from this side of it, it doesn't look the same way that it looked on the other side. But you know that we can't go no other way because it's already been written. If you got your Bibles, get Romans chapter 8. Some of us are fighting with what we supposed to do and why. Not necessarily what as much as why. And the Lord just sent me to tell you this morning it's already written. When is it going to happen? It's already ri written. Romans 8 and get 29. Romans 8 and 29. Pastor Brandon, you're going to read for me? Yes, sir. Read what it say. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. Hold on right there. So that word foreknow, it is in the Greek, it means to know beforehand or to foresee. Now, the Lord told me something. Pastor Brandon said uh, last week that he was in a fork in the road. He was living in Ohio, and he was pursuing broadcast journalism. And then the Lord came and said, if you would do this. He said he ended up choosing the word of the Lord. And the Lord said to me, he said, do you know why he chose that route other than the route that he really wanted? He said, because it was already predestined. Jesus. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1, he said, before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. Jesus. 
He said, before you were born, I sanctified and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that when God laid his hands on this man in his mama's womb, he didn't call him a broadcast journalist. He called him a prophet. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. He called him apostle. He called him a, a millionaire. He called him articulate. So he couldn't choose the other road because that's not what God called him when he was in his mother's womb. You have to have a clear revelation of who it is and what it is that God has called you to do. Because the road of opportunity, it will not scratch your itch like when you're doing That's what it is that preacher. God has called you That's to do. See, I'm a, I'm a football person. Uh, by na I, I love football and I wanted to be coaching college football, making millions of dollars and if I could get to church on Sunday I'd be there but that, that ain't what I wanted to do and as much as I love sitting there and analyzing the game and talking about what should have happened and what should not have happened when I get this microphone under the power of the anointing that is when I feel the most fulfilled now, now, this has cost me everything. I have slept on the floor for this. If you lived at 6610, you took cold showers. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here. This has cost everything. But on the flip side, it is where I get the most fulfillment. Yes, sir. See, when you're doing what it is that God called you to do, there is no better feeling than that. Read what it say one more time, Pastor Brandon. For whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate. That word predestinate is to limit in advance. That is predetermined. So it says who he foreknew, he did predestinate. In the Greek it says to limit in advance. Give me four men. I got to show this illustration. Come here, Justin. Chris, come here. Come here. Come here, like now. Real quick. All right, two on the side of me, one in front of me, one behind me. One in front of me. Thank you, God bless you. God bless you. So when he talks about predestination, it means to limit. So what, I'm, what you're looking at is, is he's got you boxed in. God has already put limits on how far you can go in the in the beginning as bishop would say so if i try to move this way there's already now you got to be a little stronger than that reverend uh there's already a barrier that has been put in place that won't let me get too far outside of what god has predetermined me to do see some of you the reason why you didn't get all of what you should have got when you had your moment in the world because he already had you boxed in. Y'all playing with me in here. So, 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 so when you was doing your thing and you was getting your groove on, uh, HIV couldn't grab you because he had you boxed in. It, it wasn't because it couldn't get through the condom. It wasn't because it couldn't get through the birth control. It was because he had you boxed in and that would mess with your destiny. And so because that would come between you and destiny, God said, I can't let that get to you. See, the, to limit in advance, that means that when I came into the world, he already had me boxed in. In my core or in my super ego, which is the balance between ego and id, there was already a stay, a God stay, a God seed in my super ego that would not let me go too far outside of what he predetermined and predestined me to do. God bless y'all. And so some of us, we wonder why. I, I'm, can I just be honest this morning? Can I just take the, the, the cloak off? I don't want to be a preacher. Can, can y'all just see me as your brother uh, this morning? I wanted to be a hoe. Can, can I just tell the truth? I didn't want to be a church boy. Just line them up and, knock them down. and let me knock them down. But it, it was something on the inside of me because it wasn't 
it wasn't the, the power of the word that I was under. It wasn't the, they wasn't teaching the Holy Ghost. So nobody had laid hands on me in the back. I, I hadn't received, but it was the predetermined will of the Father that, that what I called you to do, you can't do that and be a hoe. Some of us ought to have kids all over the place. You, you, you ought to have four, five, six, but because it would mess with your destiny, y'all playing with me, because it would mess with what God has called you to do, God said, I can't let you get that far out there. I've already put restraints on the inside of your spirit that will only let you go so far. So when I tell you that predestination is real, we are walking out what it is that has already been predetermined for our lives. Read what it say, Pastor Brandon. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate uh -huh. to be conformed to the image of his son. Watch this, the Webster's Dictionary. Uh, can I just slow walk this? I don't want to. I don't want to get in a hurry. I promise you, I still ain't gonna be here long. The Webster's Dictionary definition of conform is to be similar in form or type. So please understand that we were made in the image and the likeness of the Father. And so when God is making us or building us, our uh, process, it looks similar to the process of Jesus. You don't believe me? Well, the Bible says that Jesus was a man that was acquainted with grief. Why? Because he knew what was in people. And so if we really tell the truth this morning, a lot of us, even uh, in our infancy, we became very acquainted with grief. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here. The, the Bible says that Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. And so if we really tell the truth this morning, the only reason why some of us are as obedient as we are is because we didn't got the brakes beat off of us to the point to where we know if I go that way, there's a whole lot of suffering that's attached to it. So I'm telling you, your process don't look no different than the process of Jesus. So you gotta understand something about God. God is very patient. God knew that it would take 30 years to get Jesus flesh tempered enough for three years of ministry. Knew it would take him 33 years to get his flesh tempered enough for one hour in the Garden of Gethsemane. But we around here wanting God to do stuff in a day. And God is saying, if I gave that to you right now, your flesh ain't been tempered enough to handle that. Bishop was just saying in the office, he said, wealth is not money. He said, it's knowledge. He said, so you get knowledge and then you get more money. Because God is saying, I'm not going to release a whole bunch of money to a fool. Some of you, if I can really be honest this morning, if God gave you what you was really asking for, it wouldn't do anything but make you a bigger fool than what you already are because you already don't listen to nobody no way. So if we gave you a whole bunch of what you want, you sure in the hell wouldn't listen to nobody. <laughs> Take your liberty, preacher. Take your liberty. To be conformed to the image of his son. Read what it say, Pastor Brandon. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Read. And whom he called, them he also justified. Now you got to watch that word justified. Because when he said he predestinated you, he called you, and then he justified you. That word justified is to render just or innocent, to liberate, or to make you righteous. See, see, we get messed up when you go to talking about righteousness because we have righteousness pegged as what we do for God. 
But the Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags in his eyes. I wish I had a dirty uh, 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 tampon right now so I could show you. Yeah, yeah, I need you to see the visual because that's what it looks like. Our righteousness. But when you truly understand what righteousness is, righteousness was never predicated on what we do for him. But it was predicated on what he did for us. It was his blood that he shed on Calvary that washed us and made us whiter than snow. That's what made us righteous. It ain't got nothing to do with your tithe. Ain't got nothing to do with your offering. Now, please don't misunderstand me. Keep giving your tithes and keep giving your offerings. Let me put that disclaimer in there because folks will go home and say that the preacher says stop tithing. The devil is a liar. But it ain't your righteousness ain't predicated upon that. So it says those he called, he also justified. Read what it say, Pastor Brandon. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Now watch this. You got to understand something here. God is not building us just to carry an anointing. But he's building us to carry his glory. That's, that's completely different than carrying an anointing. And so when you carry the glory, you got to understand something. The only way you get glory is through suffering. R Romans 8 and 18 said it like this, for I therefore consider that the sufferings of this present time shall not compare with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Who is going to be revealed in us? Who is going to be revealed in us? But how is it coming? It's coming by way of suffering. But I'm so glad he said that if you suffer with me, y'all playing with me, you, you, you shall reign. I'm so glad that, that he already gave a prerequisite as it relates to suffering, that if you suffer with me, you can reign with me. Jessica Betts says it like this, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. But I'm telling you, if you just keep suffering with him, if you just keep letting them scandalize your name, if you just keep letting them talk about it. I love the fact that I go to a church that folk keep their mouth on because that means we carrying something. That, that means that we doing. See, you don't talk about something that ain't doing nothing, but that means that we're ascending to the place that God is calling us to when folk keep running their mouth and keep talking about they ain't this and they ain't that. But when you get in trouble, you still show up to get the word of the Lord that comes out of this house while you was running your mouth. to go but let me tell you and help you understand it is written before I got married me and my wife she ain't here she's home taking care of the baby but we was raising a whole bunch of hell after we got married we were still raising a whole bunch of hell my brothers can, can attest to what I'm talking about here the Tuesday night before we got ready to get married. Yes, they called, they said, hey, we, we got to have a meeting because you niggas is crazy. <laughs> so we went right over, there right over there in Pastor John's office. And the bishop come in there and he said, this is a mess, is what this is. He said, y'all need to wait uh, before y'all get married. Now, <laughs> let me set this up for you. <laughs> it was Tuesday, Bishop. The hotels was booked. <laughs> the, wedding, the wedding dress was paid for. The tuxedos was already measured and cut. We was getting ready to pick them up on Friday. Uh, my family was already in, in transit coming. The, the reception hall, the food was already being prepared. But the bishop said, y'all need to wait. So in my heart, I'm torn between two lovers because I'm saying, God, I want to obey you, but I'm too far. <laughs> I'm too far down this road to turn around now. So we get married anyway after the bishop told us 
to wait. Now, some of y'all judging me, but you done been told not to do some stuff. And you did it anyway, so ain't no sense in you looking all self-righteous. You know you done did some stuff you wasn't supposed to do. So we get married anyway. We stood right, right up there on the altar. Right up there, we, you'll never find. We did all of that. I don't know if we got off the altar good and we was already fighting. Every day, it wasn't no, when I tell you, it wasn't no breaks in between. It was all gas and no breaks. I said, listen, I can't, because y'all know I, that ain't my style. I like peace. And then I said, I can't. She got me saying stuff. I didn't even know all of that was in me. I didn't know that I was this crazy. I was down at the quick trip with a phone, no keys, flip-flops and, and sweatpants, calling Justin, man, you got to come and I can't do this. And had he not been on the phone with Bishop, he was on his way. <laughs> I said, I mean, he had to be on, on the phone with Bishop while I'm calling, trying to get somebody to come rescue me. So when I, so Bishop said, I'm gonna wait on the phone until you talk to him and tell him what you are gonna do. When I tell you God had me boxed in, and, and, and I'm telling you, every morning I went, to, I woke up, I heard that weight in my spirit. Every, I went to bed at night with that weight. I, I dreamed, in my dreams, I could hear my daddy saying, wait, son, wait. And so that thing was eating, when I tell you it was eating me up, with every growing fight, I was getting closer and closer to getting in my car and driving until it fell apart and just never, ever, ever coming back. To, to, make, time, to make it all the worse, uh, uh, we got married in, in June, and Gabe was born in March. I said, God, you, you, you play way too much. But one day, God gave me an out. I was on the phone. I called my pastor, that light bright right there, Johnny Reels. And I was talking to my pastor, and he said, he said, preacher, he said, do you ever think about when Bishop told y'all to wait in that office? I said, Johnny, I said, that thing is wearing me out. I said, every day I go to bed. Every morning I get up, I hear the bishop say, wait. And he's cracking up laughing. Y'all know Johnny, he's un unapologetically corny. So he's, di he's dying laughing while I'm saying this the whole time. But he said, pre <laughs> he's dying, I'm bleeding. Johnny is dying laughing. He said, preacher, he said, can I help you with that? He said, I know y'all are fighting. He said, I know it looks crazy. He said, this baby is coming. He said, I know you got a lot on your heart. He said, but can I tell you, that it was already written. Y'all ain't heard what I said. Johnny Real said, preacher, it was already written. He said that on that day, she was going to wear that dress, standing at that altar, in front of those people. Y'all playing with me. You was going to have on that tux. He said you were going to have those groomsmen standing around. It was already written. So I know you stuck on the way. But let me tell you, God already had a plan. Y'all playing with me. Can, can I just tell somebody this morning that you stuck on the stuff that you didn't get right, but God already had a plan? He, he's already worked it out. See, all roads, baby, lead back to God. And so while I was tripping on the weight, Gabriel had to get to the world. Y'all playing with me. Isaac had to get to the world. Y'all playing with me. Zamir had to get to the world. And Bishop just prophesied the other day. He said, y'all going to adopt a baby girl wherever she is and whatever she do. She got to get to the world. So I ain't got time. 
to be tripping about the weight. It was already written and predestined that it had to go this way. Can, can I just tell you, Pastor John, while I'm here, let me encourage my brother. Listen, I know you don't understand all the time the level of impact that your words have in our lives. I, I know you look and you say, Brandon is articulate, he's strong, he's anointed. Why you couldn't get him to do it? Why, why you couldn't get Jamel? Why you couldn't get Justin? Why you couldn't get Chris? But I'm telling you, when they put our apostle and spiritual father in the ground, it's already written that nobody other than John Wayne Fitzgerald, right? y'all playing with me, can do this. So it don't work without you, Johnny. God said, I'll let you have your moment, Johnny. I'll let you be disappointed for a little while. I'll let your heart be broken for a little while. But son, you got to come back to your place because this don't work without you. It don't work without your teaching. It don't work without your prophesying. It don't work without your counsel. The gates of refuge is on the inside of you and it don't work without Johnny. Y'all playing with me. He got you, you don't know what it costs to do this. You, you don't know the sacrifices that have to be made to do this. So God said, I ain't tripping about you having your moment. I ain't tripping about you being disappointed. Because I'm sitting at the right hand of the Father, knowing that it's already written in the heaven. Mama Sharon, I got to get out of here. Mama Sharon was trying to get away from Mel. She said, I can't do this no more. I got to go. Mel talks crazy. Mel is bald-headed. Mel ain't got no eyebrows. I got to go. I can't do it. And, and they even got a divorce. But some kind of way the divorce it didn't get up in the realm of the spirit. You know why? Because it was already written that that man and that woman, they had to stay together. Now, I don't know what's on the mind of the father. I don't know what God is doing. But he said, Mel and Sharon, they got to stay together because somebody needs what's on the inside of Mel. Somebody needs what's on the inside of Sharon. And I'm telling you, I never recognized the divorce because it was already written. 